School of Public Administration, University of Victoria, Dr. Rita Trumbe, Vice President, Academic and Compost, Dr. Philip Lancaster, Adjunct Professor, University of Victoria, Mr. Adama Jane, UN Special Advisor to the Secretary General of the UN on the Prevention of Genocide, Dr. Mary Ellen, Professor and Dean, Faculty of Human and Social Development, Mr. Augustin Rousseka-Mouzi, the chairperson of the, uh, the Rwandan community here in Victoria, friends of Rwanda, fellow Rwandans, especially survivors who are here present, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen. Allow me first of all to express my gratitude to the University of Victoria and UNICEF for organizing and hosting this commemoration event uh, here at the University of Victoria. For the past couple of weeks, since April 7, our community, our country, our people, our friends, and in fact the whole world have been attending remembrance activities related to the genocide against Tutsi that happened in Rwanda in 1994. Today, here at the University of Victoria, we join our Rwandan brothers and sisters to commemorate one of the darkest chapters in the history of humanity, the last genocide of the 20th century, and hopefully, the last genocide on Earth. The theme for this year's genocide commemoration, as previously said, is Remember, Unite, Renew. This theme was carefully selected with the aim to remember the people murdered in Rwanda and to show solidarity to the survivors. The aim is also to illustrate the ability of the Rwandan people to unite and reconcile through shared human values and appreciate the determination of the Rwandan people to renew their country. In 100 faithful days in 1994, the world stood by and watched while over one million people were mercilessly massacred by Hutu extremists in the worst genocide known to mankind for the only reasons of being born to see. The killing machine did not spare the brave Hutu or other foreigners who tried to oppose the killing. The then government and its bankrupt leaders played the leading role using state-sponsored media to execute the very well-planned project of the genocide against Tutsi. The project was conceived a very long time ago and its implementation was systematically tested since the year 1959, killing thousands and forcing hundreds of thousands into exile. Noble citizens were empowered to become the killers it did not matter if you were an infant, a child, a woman, a old person, or even hospitalized, even mentally challenged people, as long as you were too you had to die. It was a time of confusion, betrayal, a time of, of people who must live in harmony as brothers and sisters, some against each other in senseless feelings that lasted 100 days, and so entire families wiped out out and whole communities disappearing on the face of the earth. All the common values previously uniting Rwandans Rwanda were ignored. Rwandans sharing the same land, same culture, same language, same traditions, turned against their countrymen using dehumanized names like cockroaches, snacks, and so on to make it easy on their human conscience. Rwanda became a, a killing field. The magnitude and efficiency of the killings was out of proportion with an average of 10,740 people being killed every day, 448 every hour and seven people every minute. Those who survived are still facing many hardships physically and emotionally as they try to rebuild their lives and carry on. As a result, one in over a million people died, hundreds of thousands were made orphans, widows, and millions became refugees and internally displaced. The genocide against Tutsi was the most efficient and complete genocide of modern history. Distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen. What happened was not only tragic, but also incomprehensible in the sense that brothers
brothers and sisters, neighbors, friends, and colleagues were pitted against each other on the basis of spurious differences largely concocted by colonial rulers for the purpose of sustaining the atrocious rules. But what is even more appealing is the fact that the whole world failed miserably in preventing or stopping this humanitarian catastrophe on a massive scale. Our gathering today is a time to remember those who perished and stand in solidarity with the survivors. It is also a moment of, of reflection on what has been done over the last 20 years to prevent such atrocities and renew our commitment to fight genocide and other crimes against humanity. To prevent the genocide, historical clarity of what happened in the past. In the case of Rwanda, it is a fact that what happened in 1994 is a genocide committed by Hutu extremists against Tutsi. It is a fact that moderate Hutu and other foreigners who opposed the killing or tried to save Tutsi were equally murdered even though they were not the prime target of the killing. It is a fact that the genocide is a project that was carefully planned by Rwandans with their European allies and the Catholic Church. Finally, it is also a fact that the international community did nothing to prevent or to stop the genocide despite a clear series of early warnings that should have triggered a serious and urgent response to a looming catastrophe. Denying this fact can and will only continue to keep the south on the memory of the dead and the fortitude of the living. Distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, thanks to the Rwandan Patriotic Front, it took the courage and determination of violent Rwandan men and women under the leadership of His Excellency Paul Kagame to stop the genocide and take control of the country. In the aftermath of the genocide, Rwanda was completely destroyed. And the future of the country was bleak. No one could have imagined that Rwanda would come out from the ashes and rebuild itself from scratch. But today, Rwanda is a different country. It took the resolve and dedication of a visionary leadership and a resilient people to leave the degrading legacy of the genocide and embrace a new, vibrant, and united Rwanda. Today, the country has made great strides to enhance unity and reconciliation among its people. The country is going through profound development to promote the reconstruction process of the nation. From almost a non-existent stage, Rwanda has become a nation of hope, prosperity, and equal opportunity for its people. Different sections of the Rwandan society, youth, women, disabled, civil society, and religious groups have assumed and played an active role in the process of rebuilding the country. Women have come at the forefront of nation building with the women participation in women representation in parliament of 64%, the largest in the world. Rwanda is a, a peaceful, safe, secure, and stable country. The economy has grown at over 8% per year for the last decade. The infrastructure has been rebuilt. Our people have gained the necessary capacity building in key sectors. There is universal access to education. Healthcare and basic social protection are available to each citizen. Rwanda is one of the countries likely to meet almost all the United Nations Millennium Development Goals. The transformation our country has gone through in a span of barely two decades is a testament to the resolve of our government and our people to never relapse into, the, into that madness again. But most importantly, it is a tremendous success of our visionary leadership under President Paul Kagame in steering the country away from animosity and revenge into peace and development. Rwanda is often cited as an example of successful post-conflict peace building and recovery. Today, many people talk of the Rwandan miracle when facing the contrast between those dark days and what meets the eye of any visitor to Rwanda. Ladies and gentlemen, let Rwanda's story serve as a lesson and a reminder to the world that it is not by stoking more violence and stirring emotions that true healing can be.
achieved. It takes leadership and commitment to relegate past artificial differences to the blood to the back waters of history and embrace a common future and a common destiny. It's the same visionary leadership that has allowed our country to achieve so much in such a short time. Priorities given to building peace, harmony, and development instead of conflict, division, and violence. That is the foundation on which Rwanda is building a brighter future for the country and generations to come. Also, applying homegrown solutions is a lesson Rwanda can share. These are proving the ability and there is little illusion that one size fits all prescriptions from the so-called experts do wonder. Most importantly, what we have learned from our tragedy is that people must always be responsible for their own fate. Rwandans waited for the war to save them from their killers and their perish. Our work of national construction is ongoing. We have much more to do to build a middle-income nation that offers its citizens more and greater opportunities. This remembrance, remembrance period is a time to reflect on the past 20 years and to turn our attention to the challenges that lie ahead. As we remember the genocide against Tutsi, we must ensure that what happened in Rwanda never happened anywhere else in the world. The international community had felt Rwanda in its time of greatest <coughs> need. Today, we must all resolve to give a meaning to the world never again. This is why Rwanda has embarked in many peace-building missions across the African continent as a contribution to ensure that lives are preserved and human dignity is valued. Rwanda is the sixth largest troops contributor to the UN peacekeeping operations. Our troops are currently deployed in peacekeeping missions in Japan, South Sudan, Ivory Coast, Liberia, Central African Republic, Mali, and Kenya. In conclusion, distinguished guests, let us learn from the Rwandan experience and ensure no other country suffers the silence and the indifference of the international community. Let the world stand in solidarity with the Rwandan people as we continue our quest to preserve common humanity and our journey of nation building. Thank you so much for your time.